Hello everyone, welcome to another knowledge lesson. Before we start our vocabulary words or our read aloud today, I want to talk about riddles. The title of our read aloud today is Oedipus and the Riddle of the Sphinx. A riddle is a tricky question or statement or a guessing game. I'm going to give you a couple of riddles I want you to see if you can guess the answer. All right, are we ready? The ancient Greeks believed I created humans and that my brother created all of the other animals. Zeus later punished me for giving humans fire. My name means foresight or thinking ahead. Who am I? If you guessed Prometheus, you got it right, my friends. Let's try another one. In Greek mythology, I am the goddess of the harvest and the mother of Persephone. When Hades spirited her away to the underworld, I grew very sad and crops stopped growing. Who am I? All right, friends, if you guessed Hades, you got that one wrong. If you guessed Poseidon, you got that one wrong. You got that one right if you guessed Demeter. There will be a riddle in our read aloud today. I want you to see when we get to the riddle, our hero in our story will have to try to answer the riddle. I want you to see if you can figure out what the answer to the to the riddle in our read aloud is today. All right, now I'm going to go over our vocabulary words and then we'll start our story. Posed. Posed means presented or suggested. Every Friday, Mrs. Fitz, the math teacher, posed a tricky problem to the class for them to solve over the weekend. Encountering. Encountering means unexpectedly meeting or coming upon. As John ran his errands on Saturday, he kept encountering friends and neighbors at various stores. Insisted. If you have insisted on something, you have ordered or demanded it. My mother insisted I wash my hands before I eat lunch. The word insist can have many different forms. It can be used as an adjective. Insist as an adjective is insistent. That means being demanding. My father was insistent that I come inside from playing and eat dinner with the family. It can also be used as an adverb, insistently. That means that you are doing something demandingly. I promise to always do my homework, Rhea told her mother insistently. Long ago, one of the Greek cities was called Thebes. At one point in its long history, a towering rock overlooking the various roads into Thebes, there lived a horrible monster called the Sphinx. Have you heard the word Sphinx before? What do you think a Sphinx is? This sphinx was not like the great stone statue in Egypt that stares out endlessly over the desert near the Great Pyramid. The Theban sphinx, according to Greek myth, was not a statue. She was a living beast. She did have a lion's body, like the Egyptian statue, but the Theban sphinx had the face and neck of a human woman. She had wings so she could swoop down and attack anyone and could speak as humans do. It was she who posed the riddle. Whenever a traveler tried to enter Thebes, that person knew the Sphinx would be waiting on her high rock. The monster would say, I am going to eat you unless you can correctly answer this riddle. What is it that walks on four feet in the morning, on two feet at noon, 
and on three feet in the evening. Hmm, what do you think the answer to that riddle is? Do you have a guess? The poor traveler was often too frightened to even speak, and the cruel beast would strike with her sharp claws and teeth. Even if some clever person tried to answer the riddle, the Sphinx would always listen and then exclaim, You have guessed wrong. Now I will eat you. No one knew why this terrifying creature had chosen to live on a rock above the road to Thebes or why, in, why she insisted on posing this particular riddle. They knew only that she ate every person she met. Not only that, but no one from the outside would bring fresh food to the city for fear of encountering the monster. If someone does not solve this riddle, the people told one another, we will starve. As bad as this was, it was not the only problem the Thebans faced. Their king, King Laius, never returned from a journey he had taken far from home. So the person the Thebans had usually turned to for help was not there in their hour of danger. In this dreadful situation, you can imagine how surprised the guards were when they looked out from the city walls one day and saw a man nearing the main gate. They did not recognize him, but they could see that he was tall and richly dressed. The captain of the guard said, maybe he will make it. I do not see the Sphinx anywhere. Perhaps she is off watching another road. What do you think? Do you think the Sphinx will pose her riddle to him? But just as the captain was about to order the gate thrown open, down came the Sphinx like an arrow shot from the clouds above. She settled on her rock and looked down at the stranger with cold, pitiless eyes. Traveler, said the monster, today you have chosen the wrong road. The stranger boldly replied, I choose my own roads and my own destinations. Today, I will go to Thebes. Anger lit up the monster's eyes as she said, I alone decide who travels this road. If I say no one travels this path, so it shall be. You have one chance and one chance only. You must correctly answer my riddle. Tell me, foolish man, what is it that walks on four feet in the morning, on two feet at noon, and on three feet in the evening? The stranger sat down in the dust of the road to think. The Sphinx, sure Oedipus wouldn't guess it, gazed down at him, her tail twitching with impatience. After some time, she stopped even that movement. For half an hour, the man sat thinking as the huge beast lay still atop its rock. Meanwhile, the people of Thebes had rushed to the walls. They knew the man would probably not guess the riddle, but it had been so long since anyone had even tried, they had come to see him try. At last, the stranger rose to his feet. Have you an answer? demanded the Sphinx. In a strong, sure voice, the man repeated the riddle. What is it that walks on four feet in the morning, on two feet at noon, and on three feet in the evening? Then, staring straight into the Sphinx's eyes, he said, the answer is man. As a baby in the morning of his life, he crawls on all fours. At the noon of his life, when he is grown up and strong, he walks upright on two feet. In his old age, the evening of his time on earth, he walks with the aid of a cane as if on three feet. The Sphinx's eyes flew open in shock. The traveler had answered correctly. With a cry, the monster threw herself down from her high rock. The Sphinx was finally gone. With shouts of joy, the people of Thebes rushed down from their walls, threw open their gates, and poured out onto the road. They lifted the stranger onto their shoulders and carried him into their city. There they asked, Who are you, great hero? To whom do we owe our lives? I am Oedipus, he answered. 
No, they replied, not just Oedipus. You are now King Oedipus, master of the Sphinx and King of Thebes. So that is the story of how Oedipus answered a riddle and became a king. Were you able to guess that riddle? The Sphinx's riddle was a little bit trickier than the ones I gave you at the beginning of the lesson, I think. All right, I've got a couple more, not riddles, but questions for you about our story today. What was the riddle that we heard the Sphinx give Oedipus? What was the riddle? The riddle was, what is it that walks on four feet in the morning, two feet at noon, and three feet in the evening? What was the answer to that riddle? And why did that answer make sense? As a baby in the morning of our lives, we crawl on all fours. At noon or the middle of our lives, we walk on two feet and in the evening of our lives or in our old age we will often walk with the aid of a cane as if on three feet. Oedipus gave the answer that the person that walks on four feet in the morning, two at noon and three in the evening is man. Who gave that riddle to Oedipus? The Sphinx gave that riddle to Oedipus. Is the Sphinx a mythical creature, do you think? Yes. What is a Sphinx? What does a Sphinx look like? A Sphinx has the body of a lion, the face of a woman, and wings. I'm going to write Sphinx. There are mythical creatures call them. After the Sphinx gave him that riddle, were the Thebians grateful to Oedipus? Yes, how do you know that they were grateful to him? They cheered for him and they even named him king after all of that. Remember, Thebes was the city that the Sphinx guarded the entrance to. All right, our last question today is a question I want you to ask to whoever is helping you today. But instead of a regular question, I want you to ask whoever is helping you today a riddle about our story or about one of the characters that we've learned about so far. You choose who you want your riddle to be about. See if you can come up with a riddle to ask whoever is helping you today and see if they can guess it right. And if they can't, you get to be the teacher and you get to explain your riddle to them. When you are done coming up with your riddle and asking your helper today, go ahead and open up the PDF that's attached to this assignment and I'm going to jump on my computer so I can show you what to do. We are moving right along in our writing steps for our Greek myths. We have already planned a Greek myth. In our last lesson, we wrote a draft using our plan. Today, we are going to take that draft and complete our third step in the writing process, revising and editing. To complete today's assignment, you will need your assignment from last lesson that has your draft. When we're revising and editing our work, we're looking at our writing and making it better or stronger and fixing any mistakes. We're going to use this checklist and make sure we have all of these features corrected in our draft. The very first thing that I want you to look at is punctuation. Remember, our punctuation is the final mark at the end of a sentence, a period, a question mark, or an exclamation mark. If you have dialogue in your story, 
Remember, dialogue is a conversation between two or more people. The type of punctuation we use for dialogue are quotation marks. We'll also use commas for that, so make sure you have that punctuation as well if you are using dialogue. When you have gone through and in a different color on your rough draft, added in any missing punctuation, then you can go ahead and put a check mark in that first box. The next thing you're going to check is capitalization. Remember, all of your sentences should start with a capital letter, and any names or names of places need to be capitalized as well. When you have made sure everything in your story is cap that needs to be capitalized is capitalized, put a check mark in that column as well. The third thing we're going to check is does your story, do you have a sentence that explains your characters? A little person here represents the characters in your Greek myth. Do you have a sentence at the beginning that explains your characters? When you've made sure that that sentence does exist in your Greek myth, you can put a check mark in that one. Our next one is about the contents of your writing or what you're right what is in your writing what is it about do you have a sentence that explains the the beginning of your story what's happening there do you have a sentence explaining the middle and do you have a sentence explaining the end or what your myth explains when you have made sure that you have all three of those sentences go ahead and add a check mark on that one as well the next thing that you're going to check is you're going to read through your story again and see if there is any extra detail that you could add. We've been working a little bit about writing with detail or adding description. See if there are any more descriptive words that you could add to your writing to make the picture in your audience's mind more clear. When you feel like you have added sufficient enough detail for your audience to understand your story, we can do a check mark in that one as well. And our very last one says make sure your sentences make sense. Part of your sentences making sense is making sure that they are complete sentences. Remember, we can't just write, if we say Leonidas, left to. That doesn't really make sense. If we say Leonidas left to go fight in the battle, that makes more sense. Make sure your sentences are complete, that it is a complete thought. When you have made sure that all of your sentences make sense and you don't have any partial sentences hanging out in your writing, Go ahead, go ahead and add a check mark in that last box as well. When you have checked all of these things in your rough draft and fixed them with a different color, you can choose any color that you would like. I want you to turn in two different things to your teacher. I want you to turn in this sheet that has the check marks for your editing and revising. And I also want you to turn in your rough your edited and revised rough draft so you can do that by taking a picture of it if you kept a hard co copy or you can add a digital file if you made it a digital file whatever is easiest for you turn in both things but make it make sure that you still have a copy of that rough draft make sure you have a copy of your edited and revised rough draft we'll use that in our next lesson.